Hey, what's up you guys? It's Emily, a little rough talk queen. I'm here with Ashika and Ramona. So Ramona here <laughs> is my red-footed tortoise. She is about six years old or so, the previous owner claims, but she's huge for a six-year-old red tortoise. I'm sure she's a little bit older than that, maybe like seven or eight. She was pretty small when I first got her. She's pretty big. This video is all about- Do you want to hold her? She's kind of damp. <laughs> Ew. This video is all about the care of these red-footed tortoises. These red-footed red tortoises are from South America. They are a tropical tortoise. They like it very, very humid, like 80%, maybe even 100%. They like it very, very moist. Oh my gosh, you're brushing your hair with your toenails. <laughs> They also are omnivores, which is kind of fun. Unlike typical tortoises, they're also eating protein and meat. Walk on air. <laughs> it's just like, I'm swimming. Bulk of their diet is dark leafy greens, vegetables, carrots. They also should be eating some fruit. They can have, you know, very sugary diets. And they need a source of protein. Like I was saying, omnivores. She's like a spacecraft. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so in the wild, they eat carrion, which is rotten meat. And they also eat like insects, like bugs, like earthworms and grubs and bugs and all that good stuff. I just just got Ramona's a rehome. Her pre previous owner was feeding her cat food, which is not ideal because there's a lot of filler and fat in cat food. So that's probably why she's gotten so big so fast. The these guys, girl. yeah, these guys require pretty specific temperature requirements. They need anywhere between 35 degrees to 105 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty hot. And like I was saying, pretty high humidity. Yeah. Look at her little feet. They're red. Yeah, red foot. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you would have thought. So heavy. Yeah, she's pretty heavy and these guys live 50 to 70 years. They live a pretty long time. For substrate, I keep Ramona on a sand soil bedding. Sand soil is good for building burrows and it's really good at keeping her burrows and humid by keeping kind of like the ground wet. Just be careful that back end she might pee or poo on you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll talk more about wrists in the next video and that's definitely a big one is when these animals poo and pee on you, which is inevitable with all animals, even human babies do that all the time. But she's pretty cool. Tortoises don't really have teeth and molars like, you know, normal animals do. They have a beak like a bird. Along with the special heating requirements, these guys also need UVB. So UVB is something that maybe might be overlooked. Have you ever heard of UVB? Um, only like in lab. <laughs> in lab? So you're a little bit familiar because you got yeah. a science background. Yeah. So UVB is often overlooked by the general public and by even no like new keepers just because UVB is kind of like, I don't know, unknown kind of concept. So UVB is what the sun emits. It's the rays the sun emits and it's really essential for growing healthy bones and metabolizing calcium. Along with supplementing your tortoise with calcium, either with using calcium powder or cuddle bone, which is like the spine of cuttlefish and squid. It's very complicated. You need to supply these tortoises and many other lizards like bearded dragons UVB. So you need to buy these special UVB bulbs that emit this UVB so that these guys don't get pyramiding. Pyramiding is very common in these tortoises and it's when the shell starts to deform. You see it a little bit, I know, fit in Ramona. She doesn't have it that bad, but you see kind of like the peaks and stuff and how they're at different levels. Tortoises should have completely smooth carapaces. So the shell should be completely smooth, but she has this little pyramiding. It's not so bad. When I was working at the kangaroo farm, we got some guys to render redfoots and they had really, really bad um, pyramiding. You can also see that it seems like she might have like a little bit of deformity a little bit. It's not too obvious. Can, like over time, can this be like fixed? It can't be fixed. It can't really be reversed, but you can definitely make changes to not have it continue to happen by, like I was saying, um, having the correct UVB. She was trying to run away. <laughs> She's so fast for a tortoise. It's yeah. crazy. I actually so. don't believe that the rabbit one. <laughs> yeah, the rabbit probably got distracted and ate in this one's treading along. And then there's a couple other things you should look out for, like shell rot. If it's so humid, sometimes yeah. their shells rot. And it's just a fine balance with these animals. And again, it's not necessarily hard. It's just fairly specific. Specific. You just gotta do lots of research. These animals live a really long time and they have really specific care requirements. It's just just feed them their kind of daily morning salads and their morning veggies and you know there's pellets that you can give them that have like hay and stuff that kind of helps them have a more complete diet. How much does she weigh? She I have heavy? no idea. You could like... You can use her in the gym? Yeah. You're so funny. I don't know she's dense. Yeah, she's she's dense. dense girl. And um she's definitely a female. She might get a little bit bigger. Not much. I don't know. The internet says 40 centimeters. I don't know what 40... I think it's like I think 30 centimeters is a foot, I'm pretty sure. So 40 is probably just over a foot, and she's probably just over a foot. 
I don't know any American measurements. You don't know what a foot is? Do you like, know what 30 centimeters is? Like, yeah, I know, like, uh, the metrics. No, wait. The, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I don't know the American system. I know. So, do you know what a foot, how yeah, long yeah. a foot is? No. No? Not no. at all? No, I've no Oh my foot gosh, that's so I know funny. what a meter is. Oh my gosh, okay. Do, do they use meters in Canada or foot? Yeah, meters. We use meters and centimeters in Canada. That's so funny. And then we use inches and feet in America. America. Yeah. I should know these things. I'm American. <laughs> <laughs> That's so ironic. They need a pretty big enclosure. So often people are keeping these tortoises in like tortoise tables, which are open face kind of pens. That's not necessarily suitable for these red footed tortoises just because they require such high humidity. So I have foggers in the cage. I have big kind of water bowls that are shallow so that she can kind of soak in it. She can drink from it. And uh, the substrate has to stay damp, which is really important. So if you have an open face enclosure, that's kind of hard, but you need to have lots of ventilation so that's also hard it's a little bit hard i have her in an eight by four enclosure and yeah she has stuff to burrow into she has logs and all that good stuff and <laughs> she's pretty happy she's a good eater i took her to a reptile presentation the other day and the kids were feeding her cantaloupe i should see if i can insert a clip of her eating can a cantaloupe in this video because i think that would be super funny and cute She's and so I also have a, cl a clip of me hand feeding her banana. We'll insert that in here too because it's so stinking cute. Woohoo, Ramona! But it's crazy. This lady dropped off this tortoise after having her for six years and said, Can you please get my tortoise a, a home? She was in a loving home before, but the previous owner, she was like a six year old woman. She's planning on moving to Alberta in the next year and she's a child in um, Australia that's having a baby um, so she just like you know she doesn't you don't know what to do with these animals when they will outlive you like this tortoise will live 70 years that lady's already in her 60s so the tortoise is gonna outlive her no one in her family really wanted to take the tortoise so she's like here Emily I see you're doing you know educational reptile shows I see that you're you know you know giving these animals a good life and bringing them into the public educating the public about these animals and I would love that life for my tortoise and I love that for me and for her because now like, she's having lots of fun living the rock star fantasy she she's literally so like if she had a personality type she would definitely be extroverted yeah she was like scratching at the enclosure she was she wanted out so bad and it's pretty cute because i don't think we realize how smart these animals are they really love attention and all that good stuff you sleep with her i wouldn't <laughs> she poops and pees a lot so kind of nasty liquid pee pee little liquid pee how like um how do you dispose of their waste i just put it in the toilet their waste <laughs> yeah i'll just if i see it like it's a little poo dropling i'll just put it in the toilet yeah, My gosh, yeah as long as it's so not bad. like solidified it just goes in the toilet like ours but those are questions we often overlook. Like, I know when I first got a snake, I was like, where's the poo from? I was like, do snakes <laughs> even have buttholes? I know that snakes have these, like, little things that they identify the gender with. Based kind on of. the scales. Kind of. Like, the number of scales. Kind of. It's very, yeah. It doesn't apply to everything, so it's hard. And even, like, feeding them. Like, the different food is so tricky. But So I think that's all we have to say about Ramona, the red-footed tortoise. She's waving goodbye. She's done with the video. <laughs> She's like, I had my air on spotlight. I'm over it, mama. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. We have one more video in our series. And then that kind of wraps up our little series. So as always, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Be sure to check out my other social medias, Little Reptile Queen. And have a fantastic day. Bye-bye. Temperature.